mentioned earlier that Britt and I, we lived for five years in New Mexico. And, and one of the first questions anyone in New Mexico asks you is red or green? And the question there is, is you know, which, which peppers do you like, red or green? And you really got to be careful. It just depends on which part of the state you're in. In some parts of the state of New Mexico, green or mild and red or hot. In other parts of the state, green are really, really hot and red is mild. Well, the, the Lord had called me to pastor First Baptist Church in Roswell, New Mexico. And I was this 26-year-old kid who you know, knew nothing but was on fire for the Lord and pastoring my first church. And so we had quarterly business meetings, like a lot of Southern Baptist churches do. And so it, uh, attendance had waned throughout the years. And so as a means to kind of garner attendance, they had a potluck dinner at the beginning of every quarterly business meeting. And so really what this turned into was this incredible, sweet fellowship of the Lord with a handful of God's people who would bring specific unique dishes that through the years the Lord had blessed in their home, they would bring them to our church. Well, we had this incredible dynamic couple in our church at the time named Sam and Tony Valdez. And they'd been in ministry for over 50 years. Uh, Sam had been an Hispanic pastor and had, had seen hundreds, if not thousands of people come to faith in Christ. And at the, the end of his ministry and at the end of his life, the Lord had really given him a passion for the poor and, and to reach out. And so they started this ministry called Jira that reached out to the, the least of these. And, and so it took you know, clothing and medical attention and education and was used as a means to bless so many there in the Rio Grande Valley. And and so Sam's wife was Tony. And Miss Tony was one of the most interesting characters that I've had the privilege of being her pastor in the last 20 years. And she was just this combination of fire and Jesus with an incredible sense of humor. And so apparently Tony, Tony had a, a very mature palate and could handle the hottest peppers you've ever had in your life. And there was just this joke among our faith family there at First Baptist Roswell that you just never would eat Tony's dishes. In fact, she would have this little dish that would be hers and hers alone. Well, uh, Brent and I were new to the area. We're new to our church. We weren't in the inside joke. And so one of your pastor's love languages is queso. Queso. Uh, you ever want a meeting with me? Just bring queso. It's going to happen. I'm there. Just love queso. And so uh, I show up to this quarterly business meeting and a little nervous. It's the first one I've ever had the privilege of leading and all of these other things. And uh, I notice that there's this little bowl of queso, all left to alone. Well, in God's sense of humor, I thought that was for me. And so I began to put it right by my plate and had this chip. And I took one chip, one chip, and began to dip it into this queso. And I could see Miss Tony, who was in her 80s, began to run a full 100-meter sprint to me. But it was already too late. And I took one bite of this queso and immediately knew, oh, my, I'm in trouble. And so Tony comes up to me and says, Pastor Matt, do you believe in ghosts? And I'm shaking my head, and she goes, you're about to. Because Tony had put ghost peppers into this queso. And for those of you who haven't partaken of a ghost pepper, don't. Don't. But I think it's akin to the equivalent of dipping your tongue into lava. <laughs> perhaps being shocked by electricity. Maybe a couple of nuclear weapons all at the same time. And so immediately I become flush. I begin to sweat profusely. My eyes are watering. My tongue is inflamed by this fire. God is working a miracle in Acts 2. God is manifesting his divine presence among his people. In fact, did you realize that fire is often a symbol of the presence of God in the Bible? That oftentimes when you see God's divine activity in the Bible, it is with fire. Remember how God presents himself to Moses in Exodus chapter 3, verses 2 through 4? Through a burning bush. When God gives his law to his people in Exodus chapter 24, verse 17, it was as a devouring fire. Here in Acts 2, verse 2, it is not their physical tongue, or verse 3, 
But the spiritual effects of that, they were literally consumed by the fire of the Lord, who is, as the author of Hebrews says in Hebrews 12, verse 29, a consuming fire. And it is the same fire of God that resides in us in Christ. So are you shining this fire? Are you displaying this work? You say, what does that look like? Be a lighthouse, not a nightlight. Man, I've got five kids, 12 and under. So we've got night lights all over our house. And you know what? Night, night lights have a specific purpose, but it's limited. Night lights are limited to circumstance. They can turn on, they can turn off. And thus they have limited potential. But a lighthouse, a lighthouse shines in any context. A lighthouse points the way to a desired destination. It always shines and thus has unlimited potential. Are you shining where God has placed you? Is his fire being displayed in and through you? The great evangelist of old, Vance Havner, said it well when he says, we're not going to move this world by criticism of it or conformity to it, but combustion within it. And the fire of God fell upon his people. And Luke tells us in verse 4, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, this is a very significant text. For did you realize that every time the word filled appears in Luke and in Acts, it describes an endowment upon someone by the Spirit for service, specifically to proclaim Christ. That every time that someone is filled with the Spirit in Luke and Acts, they're telling someone else about Jesus. That from henceforth, in Acts chapter 2, verse 4, from the moment you and I place our faith in Christ, God eternally seals all believers as his own possession through the Holy Spirit. That when we trust Jesus Christ as Lord, Paul would say in Galatians 3, verses 26 and 27, that we are, as a result of our generation, instantly baptized into the Spirit, symbolizing a decisive one-time transition to a radical, transformational new way of life. A life that lives in adherence to God's word, to following and obeying God's will and to living for God's son. That we are forever united into Christ. That his death and resurrection on our behalf thus ushers in his life through the Holy Spirit. Because God is the source of our salvation. That God is the source of our life. And thus God lives in and through us by the Holy Spirit. For we are his people. <music> 